Now that we've talked about linear equations, or equations in which there are no variables with exponents, we're going to move on to quadratic equations. Quadratic equations always contain at least one variable raised to the second power. For example, x squared minus 2x plus 3 equals 5. On test day, quadratic equations are going to appear in two forms. Expanded, so for example, a squared plus 5a plus 6 equals 0, or in binomial form, the quantity of a plus 2 times the quantity of a plus 3 equals 0. Many of the test questions are going to ask you to convert from binomial form to the expanded form. The way that we're going to do that is by using the acronym FOIL. FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. And it's going to dictate the order in which you multiply the terms of your binomial in order to make sure that the entire first binomial is being multiplied by the entire second binomial. Also on test day, you're going to be asked to solve quadratic equations. Solving a quadratic equation first involves moving all of the terms to one side of the equation so that your equation is set equal to zero. Next, you're going to factor the expanded equation into binomials. This is basically reversing the FOIL process. Once you've done that, you're going to set each expression equal to zero and then solve for the variable. So now let's try an example to illustrate how you would use FOIL to expand a binomial expression. We have the example quantity of 2x plus 1 times the quantity of x minus 8. Our first step is to multiply the first terms in each of our binomials. So 2x times x equals 2x squared. Our next step is to multiply the outer terms. 2x times negative 8 is going to give you negative 16x. Next, we want to multiply the inner terms. 1 times x equals x. And then finally, we're going to multiply the last terms. 1 times negative 8 equals negative 8. Putting that entire sequence together, we have 2x squared minus 16x plus x minus 8. Our last step is to combine like terms. And remember, when you're combining like terms, the variables must be raised to the same power in order to be considered a like term. So our first term, 2x squared, that's not going to combine with anything else. Our middle two terms, however, will combine. Negative 16x plus x equals minus 15x. So our equation reads 2x squared minus 15x minus 8. Now let's take a look at an example so that we can see how to solve a quadratic equation for x. Our example reads, if x squared minus 3x plus 5 is equal to 3, what is x? Our first step is to set that quadratic equation equal to 0. We'll do that by subtracting 3 from both sides, giving us x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now that we have the quadratic equation set equal to zero, we're going to reverse FOIL the equation, which means that we're going to break it down into the two binomials that, when multiplied together, give us the quadratic equation that we started with. We'll do so by breaking down each term. Start with the first term, x squared. What multiplied with what will give us x squared? The answer to that is going to be x times x. That's going to be the first term in both of your binomials. Now we're going to move on to the last term. Our last term is 2. So ask yourself, what factors of 2, when multiplied together, equal 2? We only have one set of factors to choose from. So those are going to be the second terms in both of your binomials, 2 and 1. Now in order to determine the sign of your binomials, we need to take into account both the last term and the middle term. The last term is a positive 2, which means that both of the signs need to be the same, either both positive or both negative. If we move on to look at the middle term, we see that the middle term is negative. That tells us that both of the signs need to be negative. So our binomial reads the quantity of x minus 2 times the quantity of x minus 1 equals 0. 
Our final step is to set each one of those binomials equal to zero and then solve for x. So we have x minus two is equal to zero and x minus one is equal to zero. In the first equation, add two to both sides to give you the solution of x equals two. In the second equation, add a one to both sides of the equation to give you a solution of x equals one. You'll notice that we have two solutions for this quadratic equation. That's very common. Quadratic equations can have up to two possible correct values for the variable. On test day, many of the questions that ask you to solve quadratic equations will ask you for what could be the value of x, or what is one possible value. Don't forget that there are going to be two possible solutions. Now that we've gotten some practice working with a few examples, I'm going to give you some time to work on some exercises on your own. Take a few minutes, work through the following exercises, and when you're finished, we'll put up the answers and go through a few examples together.
Okay, now that you've looked at the answers, let's start by reviewing question number one. Question number one asks us to expand the binomial, and we're given the binomial quantity of x plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 5. We're going to need to use FOIL to expand this binomial. Remember, FOIL stands for first, outside, inner, and last. So we're going to multiply our first terms, x times x equals x squared. Next, the outside terms, x times 5 equals 5x. The inner terms, 2 times x equals 2x. And our last term, 2 times 5 equals 10. So our expression reads x squared plus 5x plus 2x plus 10. We can simplify our middle terms so that the expression reads x squared plus 7x plus 10. The next example that we're going to look at, number 5, also asks us to expand the given binomial. What we're given is x times x plus 1. Because the x isn't added to another term, we don't need to go through FOIL. Instead, all we need to do is distribute the x as if it were a number. So, x times x equals x squared, and x times 1 equals x. Our expanded expression is going to read x squared plus x. Now let's take a look at another example in which we have to solve for the variable in the quadratic equation. Number 6 gives us the quadratic equation x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. Our first step is to set the equation equal to 0, but in this case, our equation is already written that way, so we can move on to step 2. Now we want to rewrite the quadratic equation into binomial format. What that involves is reverse FOIL. So ask yourself what times what equals the first term, x squared. The answer again is going to be x and x. Those are your first terms for both your binomial. Now take a look at the last term. We have the number 12. There are a few sets of factors to consider when multiplied together that equal 12. We have 12 and 1, we have 6 and 2, and we have 3 and 4. In order to determine which set of factors to choose, we need to take a look at the middle term. When combined, the set of factors has to equal positive 7. So we're going to choose the factors 4 and 3 in our binomials. Now our last step is to figure out the signs of both of the binomials. The 12 our last term is positive, which means that both of the signs of our binomials must be the same, either both positive or both negative. When we look at the middle term, our middle term is also positive, which tells us that both of our binomials are going to contain positive signs. So our equation reads the quantity of x plus 4 times the quantity of x plus 3 equals 0. Our final step to solve for x is to set each quantity equal to 0 and then solve for x. So x plus 4 is equal to 0 and x plus 3 is equal to 0. If you subtract a 4 from the first equation on both sides of the equal sign, you'll get x is equal to negative 4. In the second equation, subtract a 3 from both sides of the equal sign and you get x is equal to negative 3. Now let's move on to question 8. This question also asks us to solve for the variable in the equation. In the last example, we had to reverse FOIL in order to come up with the two quantities that when multiplied together equaled zero. In number eight, they're already in that format, so you don't need to reverse FOIL. Instead, just set each one of the two quantities equal to zero and solve. So 2y is going to equal zero. If you divide both sides by two, you get y is equal to zero. For the second quantity, you have y minus 4 is equal to 0. Add a 4 to both sides of the equal sign, and you get y is equal to 4. Now that we've gone through a couple of these exercises together, let's try a test question. Number 11 says, what is the set of all values of x for which x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals 0? Now this question is asking us to solve for x and then put all of the possible solutions for x in a number set. So we're going to start by solving our quadratic equation. 
our quadratic equation is already set to zero, so we can go ahead and reverse FOIL to find the two binomials that when multiplied together equal x squared minus 3x minus 18. Starting off, our first term is going to be x because x times x equals x squared, our first term in the quadratic equation. Now looking at the last term, we have the number 18. We have a couple of different factors to consider. 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. Now because we're doing a test question, we can use our answer choices to help us out. In deciding which set of factors to use, take a look at what you see in the answer choices. Put in 3 and 6 as the second terms in both of your binomials. Now let's figure out the signs. Our last term, 18, is negative, which means that both of the signs in our binomials must be different. One negative, one positive. Move to the middle term in order to determine where those signs go. Our middle term is negative, which means that the negative sign must go along with the larger number. So our binomials are going to read x minus 6 times x plus 3 equals 0. Now that we've broken it down into two binomials, we can set each one equal to 0 and solve for x. So our first equation reads x minus 6 is equal to 0. Add a 6 to both sides of the equation, giving us x is equal to 6. x plus 3 equals 0 is our second equation. Subtract a 3 from both sides of the equation, giving us x is equal to negative 3. Taking a look at our answer choices, we have answer choice C. Another shortcut that I want you to think about is looking at the patterns in the answer choices. As soon as you determine that one of your solutions is going to be positive and the other is going to be negative, you can automatically choose answer choice C and move on saving yourself some valuable time on test day.